Buongiorno, benvenuti, benvenuti to Lydia's family table. And today we're going to make meatballs with sausage meat right out of the casing. And then we're going to use those meatballs to make a casserole. Let's begin with the sauce because we need to make a lot of sauce or sugo. And then we'll put the meatballs right in there and let it perk away uh, while you do other things. Uh, to begin with, let's start with some olive oil. And we'll make a pestata. The pestata means, you know, something that's chopped together fine. And it could be many things. In this case, we'll do some onions and some shallots. So let's do some. Now, when you make meatballs, I, I give you a big recipe, a nice big pot. Because, again, I want you to have some leftover, those little treasures, those little extra treats. It's easy. You might as well put a big pot. And then you have it for many different meals with your family. And you don't want to really chop it up too fine, because if you do, then the onions begin to release uh, the water. So I, I want some texture. I want the onions to really break down in the, in the sugo itself. In the same, we'll do some celery and carrots. And the celery and carrots I did chop very fine because I want them to really disintegrate in the sauce itself. Some salt. And today we're going to be making a sugar, a gravy. The gravy name for the tomato sauce really came out of the Italian-American Sunday sauce, where they took, of course, a lot of tomatoes, and in it they put sausages and meatballs and pieces of pork. and that would be considered maybe gravy and sugar. I'll put the onions on the side. I will add the pestata of carrots, a little bit of salt to that. And here we have some tomato. Again, it's the plum tomatoes that I talk to you all the time about. And I passed them through a food mill this time because I wanted really a smoothness to it since the texture that I will get is from the meat poles itself. Let me make a hot spot here again. And I, I'll add the garlic. I'll just put a little bit of, of oil so it really is a hot spot. And this is a technique that you should make your own. Each element you give it an opportunity to caramelize a little bit before it gets mixed up with the juices of the other elements that you have put in. You know, um, spaghetti meatball, if you go to Italy, you really don't find it. And it's not a real Italian uh, dish. We made uh, meatballs, and we call them polpette. Fry them lightly, and then have them with a salad for dinner, or rarely did they end up, end up in, the, in the sauce. This is something that I sort of uh, picked up here in America, but I kind of really like it. So I make them with all kinds of things. I, I make them out of turkey, turkey, ground turkey meat, and I put raisins and pignoli nuts, and they're really wonderful. I make them out of monkfish. All the water from the juices from the vegetables have evaporated. And again, I made a little hot spot. Each hot spot you make, you add another layer of flavor to your sugo. A little bit of oil, and I will caramelize tomato paste. OK, this is caramelizing very well. Let me mix it all in. Let's add the tomato and its juice that we have passed in the food mill. To this, I'll add some fresh bay leaf. We use a lot of bay leaves, especially to make sugo. Um, a little bit of orange zest, a little bit of fresh thyme. I will salt this, bring it to a boil. Add, in this case, I have turkey stock, but any stock that you have, even water will do. I'm going to put it all in there because I want to make 
a wonderful sugo. So let's bring this to a boil. I'll let it simmer and we'll make some meatballs. So here we have the meat from the sausages, uh, but I want to add some more flavorings to it. Um, so I have some onion, some fennel, just cut it in little pieces, and a little bit of garlic. And I want to really chop this fine. So I have it all fine. I'll just saute it a little bit to bring out the flavors, you know, in the onion in the fennel and the garlic. So just a little bit of olive oil. Touch of salt. Sausages are in casings, and the casing is sort of a very thin film. So just take a sharp knife, and just open your casing, and peel the casing away. Uh, this is Italian sausages. Whatever your favorite sausage is, that's what you can use while that is simmering away. Put some eggs. Now the egg binds the meatballs. It, they, it holds them together. So whenever you're making you know, meatballs, for that matter, meatloaf, whatever, the egg element always binds it. Let me stir this some more, spread it out so it really dehydrates and gets caramelized. Let me check the sugo. And that's boiling away nicely, perking away. Actually, I'm just going to lower a little bit the flame right there. So just put the egg right in. Salt, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of the orange rind. You won't even notice that the orange rind is in there, but it will give a freshness to the meatballs. Uh, you know, I use that orange rind and lemon rind often. Put some breadcrumbs right in here. And again, the breadcrumbs is a binding element. Let me just take off my, my watch because I'm getting deep into the situation right here. Uh, and you just sort of make it go right through your fingers. I think it needs a little bit more of the bread. I think the whole thing. Parsley. Gather this and put that in the mixture. Since it's a little warm, it is all ready to be shaped in into meatballs. And as I told you before, I have help coming. Okay, so here we are, busy rolling. This yeah. is my grandson Lorenzo Manuali. And Lorenzo, what are we doing here? Making meatballs. Ah. Are you liking it? Are you having fun? Yes, I am. Okay, vieni qui, vieni qui. Vieni qui. Ah. Oh, but you have to help, yeah. You know, if you want to eat them, you have to help. On the board here? Okay. Bushy. Now give it a nice roll. I want a nice, even meatball. And you do okay, so at the same time. You get time. the same, you know, like an ice, ice scooper is, gives you sort of a sense, sense of size. Zoom, zoom. Oh, okay, good job, Lorenzo, wow. Okay, can you help me? Let's go. We have to get going here. Uh, oh, I'm doing three at the same time. Look. Two, two at the same time. No, three are no good. Two. Noni's going to help you with one. Just rolling it like this till you get it. Can you do this like Noni? Put it one between your hand. We just want put it one. Look, look how nice Noni has done it. Just roll it around like that. Can you this do that? one's nice. Oh, that's perfect. Nona. Wow. You deserve a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Mwah. Thank you. Let me just put these in. Meatball. Why don't you roll this in the flour good so Noni can fry them, and then we will put them in the sauce to cook. All right. All right. Well, the sugo is perking. I think we have just enough of it so that all the meatballs will be nice submerged in the sauce itself. So let's put the meatballs right in. 
nice and gently, but by now the, the frying sort of just firms them up. And a lot of you ask, could I put the meatball in there without frying them? And you can. Uh, yes, just make sure that it's really hot, that it's really bubbling, and you put few at the time so that the temperature doesn't change too much, so that the egg cooks and binds the meat so it doesn't fall apart in the sugo itself. It's perking. Lower the flame a little bit. Let's put the cover back on in about 20 minutes to half an hour. Give it half an hour slow perking. The meatballs will be done. And uh, it's a delightful dish. Lorenzo. Congratulations, you did a good job. Thank you very much. Will you come in the kitchen with me again? Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Okay, we'll give him other opportunities, surely. So the meatballs have been perking away and uh, I think they're just about ready. I have the pasta boiling. We're having the rigatoni with the meatballs. And I'll show you a quick salad. You know, it's great to have a little pasta, meatballs, and a nice refreshing salad, something that's quick. Well, this is celery and artichokes. The stalks that are the softer ones are better, but you can use the outside also just by either peeling or peeling it with a potato peeler. Cut them on a, on a slant, very thin. Again, when you're cutting, keep your fingers away. Your knuckles should be close to the, to the knives. And, uh, you know, uh, vegetables and getting children involved and bringing them close to the essence of life. We have a little garden, which uh, my mother, Grandma Arminia, tends, and Whenever she goes in the garden, the kids are zoom running right after her. All right, I think we have enough celery. And here I have uh, some acidulous water. That's water just with the juice of one lemon squeezed in it. And the artichokes oxidize very quickly as you clean them, so have that ready. I have started some of them. Little artichokes are better for this salad. They're, they're tender, so just pluck the outer leaves until you see the nice white. Then let's see, let's check the, the stems and again, clean the stems. You can just peel them off like that. Then you cut the tips because the tips are tough. You cut them off just where sort of the white ends. And then you cut it in half again. And you look and this is the choke. Take a, a little spoon. I would say, why not a knife? Because you're sort of putting pressure and it slides so readily here and you can cut yourself. Uh, the, the tip of the spoon will do it much safer and will do a good job just as well. Just like that and you just go around. This is exactly what you want. And the rest is all edible. Then you take the artichoke and you cut it very thin. Just like you did the celery. You say, why don't you cut it this way? See, if I cut it like this, what happens is that it just shreds all open. This way, the stem of it keeps the artichoke all in one little piece. Otherwise, you have like little shreds. Okay, so we have all the ingredients. Put it with the celery, about equal amounts of each. Some salt. And here I have juice of one lemon, which I passed through a sieve so to collect the pits. But I think I'm going to need a little more. I made a little bit more than I anticipated here. Sometimes just when you're doing the salad the best, just put, put the fork in and just sort of turn around and squeeze your lemon right in there. You have to be careful of the pits. I have one here. Let me put some oil and toss it all. Now let me just get a, a nice plate so we can get ready for dinner. 
And then on top of all of this, you just put shavings of Parmigiano Reggiano or any cheese of your liking, almost covering the whole salad with it. I just, just love it. I think that's ready. Let's check on the pasta. We're on time. Perfetto, perfetto. Let me get some of the, the sauce from the meatballs. Can you, can you see the richness of it? And almost mm. all the vegetables have disintegrated in the sauce. Okay. Let's put the rigatoni right in there. And this is uh, one of those Sunday family meals that the Italian Americans are, are so well known for. You know, uh, at our restaurants, especially in Lydia's in Pittsburgh and Lydia's in Kansas City, we have this Sunday dinner, and this is one of the most popular dishes where you get these big platters, just like at home, just like your family. You know, this big platter of rigatoni and then topped with some meatballs and sugo, a nice salad like that, a good glass of wine. Who needs anything else? And your family around you, of course, all right? I want the pasta to absorb some, some more of the sugo. I think it has done that. We'll add some cheese to tie it all. I shut the fire, as you know. I always add the cheese at the end. If you have a little assistance, like I do, then it's not all that hard to pull it together and the fun and the love of putting it together and ultimately enjoying it together. So here a nice bowl, nice warm bowl it should be. Like some in the middle. This is a dish for a family. This says there's a family that's gathering. This is sure to beckon everybody to the table. Here we have some cavatappi corkscrew, and they're really fun pasta because they absorb a lot of sauce and they're fun in your mouth. I told you that I'm going to make a whole brand new dish with leftovers. So you know when you have your meatballs and at the bottom of the pot there's some broken, some this, that, save that. Put it in the freezer and that's your little treat, like I always say, those little treats. So we have that with the sauce. We sort of defrosted that. So let's butter the casserole right here. Okay, I can, that's enough of butter. Let me just put a little bit of the sauce on the bottom so that it doesn't stick. Okay. The pasta should be done. You want it just a little bit underdone, as I always do, and then finish cooking it in the sauce itself. And this on top of it goes in the oven, so it will really be finished by the time it gets nice and crunchy and baked. Mm. This is good just as is. But I, you know, when we talk about uh, leftovers, what you want to do, you want to do a new dish. This looks like a leftover. But by the time I'm finished with it, it's not going to look like a leftover. Just a little bit of oil. OK. Add the cheese. Let's dress that, all the cheese that it mix in there. I'm just going to nestle some of the meatballs on the bottom, just for surprise. And leave it a little juicy again, because it will cook and dry out in the oven. So you want it nice and juicy. Let's take these remaining meatballs, fit them in, but these are just mm, wonderful. And we top it with the cheese, the grated cheese. And then the milkier, creamier cheese. Now, could this be uh, Fontina? Yes, it could be monster cheese. It could be mozzarella. OK, I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to put just a little bit of this because the grated cheese gives the crunchiness. So here we go in a 450 degree oven, nice and hot, from anywhere from 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on how crunchy you like it.
vuoi se? Che mangiata! All right. The casseroles are nice and crispy. Does this look like uh, food that's been reworked? No. Tell me, Lorenzo. This is Lorenzo Manuali. You know him. He has helped me. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Bravissimo. Allora, Lorenzo, cosa vuoi mangiare? Would you like some rigatoni with meatballs? Would you like some nice salad of celery and artichokes and parmigiano reggiano? Or would you like some nice crunchy cavatappi with meatballs? What would you like to eat? Uh, oh, uh, come on. What takes you so uh, I think the crunchy pops are my favorite, but I don't want that milk. That's cheese. That's what makes the pasta crunchy. So uh, should I choose a little bit of the crunchy pasta right here? This is, you like that? I don't like the cheese. Oh, let me try the cheese all by Wait. itself first. Okay, okay. I'll put a little in the corner and then you try. And then I'll give you a little bit of this. And oh, this is good, the pasta. Well, and then, of course, you want one of the meatballs that you made? Yeah, yeah. One, two, how many? Two? Yeah, that's it. That's enough? And I'm all the way back there. Okay. Can I put the cheese closer to you? Yep, that's the cheese. Oh. And I think we're ready for serious business here at our house. And yes. as we say at our house, tutti a tavola a mangiare. We are already mangiando. Give me a kiss. I want to kiss. That's a good one.